Tacoma singing the song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you have 128 years later, yeah. Wayne Toma, a descendant <laughs> of Noel Toma, yeah. singing, singing the song. The song. <laughs> How? Was he your great yeah. grandfather? It was my relative. Yeah. Oh, okay, yes. great yeah. uncle of some sort. Some, some sort, yeah. 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 But it was my relative. Uh, it's mm-hmm. amazing, 128 years later, I mean, it wasn't by accident, I don't see. So, and for me to be able to, to share that with people, it's really powerful. So did you, you must have just listened to the recording many times in order to catch the rhythm and yeah, the feel so of the song. Is my, my job is to, is to transcribe the wax cylinders mm-hmm. because I'm very, very good at writing, reading, and understanding mm-hmm. and knowing the language. So my job is to transcribe it. Very monotonous job because you go over and over and over and over. Yeah. So what I really want to capture is the dialect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the dialect, and I'm also looking at uh, the changes in the uh, language and how it has uh, evolved. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking all that in my mind as I'm listening to it, and and, and so I could actually get in its real rare form mm-hmm. as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are some words that are just. They said it differently. There's different endings yeah. to them mm-hmm. yeah. because of the time period. You know, it's changed over mm-hmm. time. It's just evolved. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. Now, have you found that there are many words since the recording? Are there many words that have been shortened? You know, like Absolutely. in the English, they just mm-hmm. shorten everything, yes. make it easier. Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Very much so. Okay. I, I noticed in the Jesse Walter Fuchs collection. I mean, I found what you can find online. Only the first song on the, is is actually um, recorded as a song. That the rest of it, the uh, I think there are 33 songs in that collection, and the rest of them are simply listed as a as a reference number to look up. I'm hoping that they will have some of those others online too. Well, see, what we're doing now is we're going through all those. See, we have uh, 31. Wax cylinders. Yeah. Um, we have 28 that are actually um, audible. Yeah. So we're working on those other three to be able to um, uh, really digitalize them, so that way they, we can really hear them real clearly. Yes. Yeah. So we're working on those now. And then you'll be able to sing those too. Right. <laughs> I think so we'll really wonderful. be able to put, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, as a language speaker, to be able to identify it and say, "Hey, this is what this is." Yeah. So it have an actual identification. See, yeah. because because these were lost. They didn't know what they had mm-hmm. in PBD Music in Massachusetts. They didn't know what they had, so they finally figured it out and who it actually belonged to. So that's how it all eventually came out. Mm-hmm. So when did they end up at the Library of Congress? Uh, actually, Don would probably know exactly when oh, they actually okay. arrived at, but I don't know exactly when but they, they actually arrived. They were at the Peabody Museum in, at Harvard for a yes. while. So we finally got access to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is Such wonderful. valuable information. Yes. Oh my God! And what a privilege to to, to, to sit there and listen to my ancestors of 128 years ago, yeah. and who knows how long ago after that, right? I'd, I'd love to be able to have a recording of my great grandfather sitting here doing something. Well, you know, Mrs. Mitchell. You know, Mrs. Mitchell. She must have been a remarkable woman. Because it wasn't just passing parties. She was interested in everything in this area. And she wrote a great deal about everything else as well. She was a remarkable, a remarkable woman. Absolutely. And she, as she said in a note that I read years ago, over 50 years ago, I guess it was, a note that, uh, that the treaty between the Indians and Colonel John <laughs> Allen, that Mrs. Lincoln in Dennysville had a copy of it, and that she gave it, Mrs. Lincoln thought, um, about the time of the First World War, uh, Mrs. Lincoln gave it to the county courthouse in the child for safekeeping. But I've gone there and I've asked them about it and so they don't know anything about it. They didn't anymore. think it was particularly interesting. Let me ask you this. Is it, I don't know if this is true, but I, I, I heard that this is true, that, that in the Chai's that there was, you know how old laws, they don't change, they, sometimes they just, you know how they have the laws, they still have that. But, but I heard that, that, uh, that they had a law in the Chai's that if anybody of native descent came to town, that everybody in town would have to bring their firearms to the uh, church. Mm. Wow. Never heard of anything so silly. Yes. <laughs> yes. The, the I heard that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's true, but I heard that. Well, 